we had already uh, given a characterization of uh, of functional limit being equal to some um, constant L in terms of uh, what happens to every sequence that converges to a point C. So when you take the limit of f of x as x approaches C, that is going to be equal to L uh, if and only if for all sequences that converge to that point C, f of x n uh, converges to L. Um, now, the next thing is uh, we have, so all the All the algebraic limits so those and this is just I mean this is a, this is corollary Larry 4.2.4 uh, which is the algebraic limit theorem functional limits and here uh, everything stated in this in the corollary is already known to you I mean you've used it many times uh, to get here I mean the, the limit of uh, if you multiply a constant by a function the limit of the constant times the function as x approaches c is going to be uh, equal to k times the limit of the function as x approaches c. You can add limits in, uh, of two different functions if both limits exist. You can take the product and you can also uh, divide limits. I mean, to take the limit of f divided by g, and that's going to be the limit of f divided by the limit of g, provided that the limit of g is not equal to zero. So, um, so this is, I mean, you, you can see this in the book. I mean, this is not, any, this is nothing new here uh, for you, but this is just, uh, it's going to give a description here. Um, this is multiplication by a constant. This is what usually allows you to say, pull out a, a constant from a limit then uh, for this 2i this is the property for um, so linearity of limits so let's say in fact well this is addition just addition is stated separately additive property of limits and these two properties property one and two are what allows you to say the limits are uh, I mean, taking limits is a linear um, kind of operation, so this is linearity. property of multiplication
So this is the product rule, if you if you will, and the quotient. property of limits and so everything here um, all these four properties is something that you uh, have already used plenty of times so I don't think it's worth uh, topping um, I mean coming from a longer time on this I mean dwell and dwell too much on this I mean this is something you already know there are some uh, examples here, also like example 4.2.6 of um, that you should be familiar with. I mean, this is a classical examples given to you in calculus. So, for instance, sine of one over x, the limit doesn't exist, and this is the typical example of a function um, or an expression whose uh, limit doesn't exist, uh, although the 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 function is bounded. So sine of 1 over x, the reason why the limit doesn't exist as x approaches 0 is because uh, the sine oscillates uh, uh, too much and goes back and forth between minus 1 and 1 and oscillates even more rapidly as you approach the, the uh, 0, so the origin. <coughs> so this is things to keep in mind, um, just, I mean, just so... Just because a function doesn't um, uh, doesn't have a limit doesn't mean that it's unbounded near a point. Okay, uh, again, this is all review for you from uh, calculus. Uh, also, the next thing, the next stop for us would be um, section 4.2, no, 4.3, which is again review. Just uh, review. Uh, you uh, you were already given the definition of continuity in Calc one using uh, epsilon delta notation. Uh, the thing is, you never were uh, well, depending on where you went, you were never asked to actually use it. I mean, you were never asked problems that involve the 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 epsilon delta. Um, Definition: The use of the epsilon delta definition, because you already, um, I mean, you were, I mean, you, you were already given a bunch of uh, rules and stuff that allow you to deduce stuff on, on uh, uh, based on what you, was covered in class. For instance, the the limits. The only time when you actually had to use the epsilon delta for for, for constructing the basic limits. Well, like the building blocks of, of other limits and, and to show continuity depends on computing limits and checking that the uh, limit of a function is equal to the value at the point which uh, you're taking the limit. Um, and that's the reason why. I mean, that's why I mean, you were never asked to use the actual definition, but I'm pretty sure that you were given the definition of continuity then. Uh, here the definition um, given in the book is let's rewriting uh, the, the definition of limit for a function instead of writing L uh, then equals to f of c um, uh, just writing f of c for L immediately so a function function from a subset of R to R is continuous at a point C 
CNA if for all epsilon greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero such such that x minus c if x minus c in absolute value is less than delta then that implies that f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon or in other words this is the same as saying <laughs> F is continuous at X equals C in A if the limit of f of x x approaches c is equal to f of c <coughs> uh, so if you go back to the definition here if instead of writing f of c we're written here l this is just the definition of f having a limit as x approaches c. If there is a number l, so if you see it here, so we say that f, the limit of f as x approaches c in a, or c in, in that case, I mean, just for the limit, you don't need c to be in a, so just to be in the closure of a. Uh, if it's you know, if it's, uh, the limit of f of x at, uh, as x approaches c is equal to l, if for all epsilon greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero so an epsilon for all epsilon greater than zero there is a delta greater than zero delta greater than zero such that if x minus c is, minus, is less than delta then f of x minus uh, minus l is less than epsilon right so the distance between x and c is less than delta implies that f of x minus l is less than epsilon so the new part here is that we are requiring that l to be uh, the value of f at the point and so f has to be defined there uh, for one and the limit has to be equal to um, and, and f has to have a limit and the limit has to be equal to that that value and that's all encoded in this formula here in this box um, and so everything that follows so the characterization of continuity uh, criteria for this continuity or are, are things that uh, we already know from um, calc 1 so just like in the case of algebraic limits uh, we have um, algebraic continuity theorem so if a function is continuous then the multiplication by constant is con continuous that addition product and also the quotient provided the the the, the um, denominator is not equal to zero at the point in question where you're trying to check a continuity uh, so uh, this is a um, so the, the, this is, I mean, there's a correspondence between the, the algebraic limits and the algebraic continuity theorem. So, um, there is
there is an now there's a set of there is a set matter set of rules algebraic rules that allow for for um, deducing deducing uh, the continuity of certain functions at a given point based on continuity <laughs> of Parts of the function so the why am I phrasing this thing like this is because uh of course, I mean, usually when they present the theorem, the algebraic theorem, algebraic continuity theorem, they give you already uh, two functions, if okay, it's f plus g. But uh, sometimes you would need to split the function, a given function, into the sum of two other functions, which you know are continuous. So you need to recognize the function, so that's why I'm saying the parts. So, um, So these rules are algebraic rules based again on the algebraic rules for limits theorem 4.3.4 break continuity theorem And here I'm just going to ask you to check the book because, as I said, I mean, everything here is just uh, uh, a review of calculus. If, if so, again, if you have uh, two functions that are continuous, you can add them and you obtain a continuous function at a given point. The multiplication by a constant doesn't affect continuity at all. And I'll go with the product, uh, the quotient, provided the denominator is now zero. So I'll give you continuous functions if the components are um, uh, are continuous. So let me rephrase this. Oh. Be more explicit so if they have a function h that can be written as the sum 
for product of two continuous functions f of x comma g of x um, <clears throat> Why do I say that? Uh, well, I mean, I'm expressing it this way. I'm just using the sum or the product, uh, and not I'm, I'm not giving you four rules instead of I mean, giving you only two rules. The thing is, uh, h of x will be, uh, for instance, for the first property, the multiplication by constant. A constant is is clearly I mean, it's easily verified to be a continuous function everywhere. So it's just uh, a particular case of the of the product of the rule for the product of two continuous functions. So one of them is trivially continuous, which is a constant. So we're falling into the product case for the first property in the for theorem 4.3.4. And the addition, of course, is just the addition property. Uh, the product is the product, and the quotient again is the product of f times one over some function. That is a function in itself, and then that function will only be continuous when if, if g, I mean, if the denominator is not zero. So if you take a one over something, or some function, that expression is going to be continuous when the something you're dividing by is continuous and it's not equal to zero. So everything can be written as a, I mean, it can can be uh, summarized into the rule for the sum and the product of two continuous functions.